Wednesday, July 20th, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we've had the so-called inflation data from the UK come out and it's at a 40 year high. And uh, what we're gonna do today is look at how simple it is to stop the inflation uh, of the currency and uh, the consequential debasement of our currency because that's what uh, inflation leads to. And the debasement of the currency, of course, leads to higher prices. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about the definition of inflation <laughs> and uh, very few people actually know what inflation is. But uh, once you understand it, it's very simple. And you'd think, why don't they teach that in the schools? Well, because the bankers and, and politicians benefit from inflation. And we're going to look at that today. Uh, before I start, I'd like to say it is a bit cooler here. <laughs> uh, we've had the mayor of London say, say that just because we had a, a couple of days of a, a heat wave, uh, that we're uh, in a climate crisis. But Billy and I have been out this morning. It's a lot cooler. Billy is uh, at the front of the house because it's cooler there. He's still quite, uh, yeah, he's still a, a bit hot. <laughs> and uh, some of you uh, made comments uh, in the last few days. Oh, you need to give your dog water. He's uncomfortable. Uh, all I have to say about that, uh, Billy is very well taken care of. Yes. He, he gets a little hot on that sofa. So that's why he's not there uh, right now. Even though it's cooled down outside, inside the house, it's still pretty warm. And I have the window open today. So I think that before we look at the uh, UK data and how uh, easy it is to stop inflation, uh, we need to look at the definition of inflation, but not the current definition, but the old definition. And, and I'm gonna revert back again to uh, my Webster dictionary from the 1970s, the pocketbook uh, dictionary. And it says inflation, an, abno an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit, uh, resulting in the substantial and continuing rise in the general price level. So. When you see headlines like you see today, for example, the FT, and the FT is supposed to be uh, a financial newspaper, right? Well, they're part of the game. They're, they're owned by the bankers. Uh, they, they're there to keep the Wall Street and the city of London going with the uh, constant inflation, right? FT uh, headline today says rising fuel costs push UK inflation up to 9.4%. Uh, uh, that's such a misleading headline. Uh, basically, what it's saying is that rising fuel costs are to blame for inflation. And that, as you see in this definition here, inflation is an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit resulting in uh, rising fuel prices. So that 9.4%, that's a measure of prices. That's the consumer price index. That's not inflation. Uh, if you really want to know what inflation is, you need to look at, at the growth of the money supply and credit in, in that country, i.e. the UK. You, you need to look at the fact that uh, the Bank of England kept rates below uh, 1% or even near zero for about, well, over 10 years, as you can see here, from 2009 up until the end of last year, rates never went above 1%. And you could argue, well, CPI was only 2%. Even if CPI was just average 2%, that's still a negative real rate. That's inflationary, of course. If you want to stop the inflation of the currency and the money supply, the interest rate has to be uh, match uh, the growth of, of currency uh, if you really want to stop uh, the inflation. And I would argue that uh, 
CPI was a lot higher, average a lot more than 2%. And you could also look at RPI, which is another measure of prices, the retail price index. That came out at almost 12% today. So now with the uh, base rate at still one and a quarter percent, and the Bank of England is saying they're going to raise it to uh, 175 or by 50 basis points, that will still be not enough to stop the inflation. And by inflation, I don't mean the prices. Uh, as you can see by the definition, um, the inflation has been baked in the cake already. So that's the Webster Dictionary. The other day, uh, my wife and I were at my mother-in-law's house because unfortunately, uh, we've had to uh, move her into a home She's almost 90 and she has dementia. And I found this Oxford Dictionary from uh, 1976. So I was curious to look at uh, what, how they uh, describe or inflation. And this is what they say. General increase of prices and fall in purchasing value of money. Increase in available currency resulting in this. So it's a little bit backwards. So basically they're saying, yes, it's the increase in available currency resulting in the increase in the general price level and the fall in the purchasing power of the money or the currency. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> uh, yes, inflation is caused by Putin. It's caused by, by COVID. It's not caused by the Bank of England and before uh, I show you how we're going to stop inflation. Just another definition here. And, and this is from uh, probably the most influential banker of the first half of the 20th century, a man called Felix Sommery, who advised governments in Europe, <laughs> the U.S. government. Uh, and he was very well respected. And I'm going to put a link to his, his memoirs in the description. This is on page 198, if you decide uh, to look at that uh, book, to read that book. And this is uh, what he said. The state alone is responsible for inflation. Inflation without government or indeed against government is impossible. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that uh, only the state has the power uh, through the through legislation to create a central bank and, and uh, to issue credit or, or debt that can be bought out of thin air by the central bank and thus manipulate the currency supply. You and I couldn't do that. If I issued a, a Maneco 64 note and I just wrote, I promise to pay you a hundred pounds and try to pay that at a shop or anywhere else, they would laugh at me. So that's what he means. And this is what the Bank of England and the government have been doing. And why do the bankers benefit from this? Well, because every time the, the government through the treasury has to issue debt, it has to sell it to the market. And who, who does that for the treasury? Well, the bankers do and they get a cut. They don't have to buy the debt. Well, they deal in it. And when you deal in it, you get a commission and uh, you sell it to investors, <laughs> to the, the greater fool out there who holds these uh, treasury paper or gilt paper that become uh, worth less and less. And I also want to touch upon what John Maynard Keynes uh, said here about Lenin. Uh, and I quote, Lenin is said to have declared that the best way to destroy the capitalist system was to debauch the currency by continuing process of inflation, governments can confiscate secretly and un unobserved an important part of the wealth of their citizens. By this method, they not only confiscate, but they confiscate arbitrarily. And while the process impoverishes many, it actually enriches some, well, the bankers and the politicians, of course. Uh, the side of this arbitrary rearrangement of riches strikes not only at security, but also at confidence in the equity of the existing distribution of wealth. So I think the other thing Lenin is supposed to have said is that uh, not one person in a million understands this process. 
And I would say even though uh, I've got over 60,000 subscribers and uh, many viewers out there for the last few years, and I've spoken about this, very few people know this. Uh, I, I would say, and I don't want to sound big headed, I, I would say that uh, you've got an edge over everyone. And uh, of course, <laughs> the best way to protect yourself is through real money, gold and silver. And, and many people are going to comment that uh, gold and silver haven't protected against inflation. Well, I beg to differ. You have to look more at the long term picture. The fact that uh, an ounce of gold in the UK was 200 pounds about 20 years ago, and now it's uh, around 1400, 1500, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, they can't really control the paper price for forever, or else they'll run out of real money, and the bankers know that. So, I'm just going to show you another uh, headline here, just to show how very, very few people know what's really going on. So the Telegraph also implies that it's the fault of fuel prices. And they put a picture uh, of a Shell uh, petrol station or a gas station. They say record petrol, pr petrol prices drive inflation to 40 year high. Uh, let's see what the Guardian says. Uh, well, they also put a picture of someone uh, putting petrol in their car. It says inflation, UK rate hits fresh 40 year high uh, of 9.4 as fuel prices rise. So no mention of the almost 15 years of 0% almost interest rates and the increase in the money supply, currency supply in credit that is really the culprit uh, of what we're seeing now, which is rising prices. So <laughs> you, you must be uh, keen now uh, to, to know how we can stop the inflation. Well, it's very simple and it's been done before in this country. Uh, yes, it has. <laughs> and it wasn't in the Middle Ages or anything. It was fairly recent. So we have to go back to 1797. Uh, there was a Bank Restriction Act. And what this did uh, is that it uh, basically suspended or closed the gold window, just like Nixon did in 1971, but it was in the UK. And why did they do that? Well, because the U UK was running out of gold and it was f fighting Napoleon. So as you can see here, uh, the Bank Restriction Act of 1797 was an act uh, of Parliament of Great Britain, which removed the requirement for the Bank of England to convert banknotes into gold. Uh, the period lasted until 1821, when convertibility was restored. The period between these two dates is known as the restriction period. So yes, there is a lot of rising prices in that period. And uh, maybe that's why President Nixon said it was going to be temporary, because they, they thought they could uh, reinstitute sound money back in 1971 but here we are over 50 years later and we still have a kind of a bank restriction uh, for the whole world so i take this date uh, or i'm telling you about this because we're going to look now at the bank of england inflation calculator and uh, it, it's a really good tool <laughs> despite the fact that it comes from the bank of england and uh the founder of the Bank of England, one of the founders, William Patterson, said that uh, they they create money out of thin air. <laughs> that simply that's what they do. Uh, he was honest enough to say that in you know uh, in plain sight, kind of uh, he didn't hide it. Um, so what I've done here is I've uh, taken the uh, Bank of England inflation calculator and, and uh, placed a, a pound there on the left-hand box. It comes up, if you go on, on that inflation calculator and you might wanna play around with it, it comes up as 10, but I put a pound. And uh, I put a pound in 18, 10, 1821, and then I used 1914, and why is that? Well, that's when the UK went off the gold standard before, uh, well, during the beginning of World War One. Yes, they went back in 25 or 26, 
but it was all screwed up by that time. So uh, the, the true gold standard lasted almost 100 years, as you can see here, after the uh, they lifted the uh, bank or they reinstated uh, the gold standard in 1821. And it says inflation or prices, I would say, average minus 0 0.1 uh, a year so actually prices dropped by 0.1 percent in those almost 100 years so it, it meant that uh, to buy the same amount of goods uh, in 1914 that you bought in 19, 1821 you only needed 95 pence and not a pound so actually you had uh, what people call today deflation <clears throat> which is really uh, if you now understand the uh, definition of inflation, deflation is the opposite of inflation. It, it's not falling prices. It, it's the shrinkage of uh, currency and credit. Uh, so it, it's really uh, misleading all this, these definitions and terms they use. But be as it may, it, it, we had a sound currency. That's because during that period, uh, the banks and governments had to stay honest in terms of uh, money or currency creation because you could go to the Bank of England or to any bank and redeem your banknote for gold. And yes, they didn't keep 100% uh, gold reserves. I think it was about a third that uh, some people say was 20%, but I think the UK did about a third. And that was enough to keep a, a sound money uh, base because you can create credit uh, in a gold standard. And uh, so it worked perfectly. And, and that's why the pound in your pocket was always uh, very steady. It's not perfect because uh, things change in a free market. So now I wanna go from 1914 to today. And I have to say, I think they've, tinkered with uh, this calculator because a year or two or even before uh, the inflation uh, from 1914 to 2021 was a lot higher than, than they're showing now. And, and I also checked from 97 to now, they're saying that uh, inflation only averaged 2%. And I've done that calculation before with their calculator and it was more like 2.7. So. I, I think, unfortunately, the Bank of England is tinkering with this number. But even if they're tinkering with it, uh, just have a look here. Uh, a pound in 1914, how much it w would you need in 2021 to buy what a pound did then? Well, 80 pounds, 56. Or uh, prices rose by 4.2% a year. Uh, they call it inflation. So there you go. That's how they've uh, transferred all that wealth in the last 107 years. And uh, Lenin was right uh, about that. And, and that's why our economy is in the shape that it is. That's why there's so much wealth inequality. And that's why the only way to stop this inflation, this uh, theft, because that's what it is. Inflation is theft, is to go back to an honest sound money system, honest weights and measure. Uh, money should be measured uh, by weight because a weight of gold or weight of silver. So hopefully if it's the first time you've listened to me and you're in the UK or anywhere around the world, uh, you can put this message out that the inflation we're seeing now or the prices uh, what it's all about, really, it's, it's not about fuel prices going up. It's not about the war in the Ukraine. It's not about COVID. It's about the bankers and the politicians really uh, inflating the currency supply. They're diluting it. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 8.40 a.m. London time. So uh, we've got spot gold at 17.0770. It's down about $4.00. Uh, Gold hasn't really gone anywhere in the last few days. It hasn't really gone up that much or down that much, pretty much in the range. Uh, uh, silver is up five cents at 1880. 
Uh, the Dow future is up 44 points. NASDAQ is up 18. S&P uh, 500 futures up six. FTSE is up 36 points or half a percent. Uh, Euro stocks 50 is down six points at 35.80. To the currencies now, sterling is trading just above 120 at 120.09. It's up an eighth of a percent. Uh, the euro is up about 0.2 at 102.50. Uh, the dollar is down slightly versus the yen at 138.08. Dollars unchanged versus the Swiss franc at 96.88. And the dollar is up slightly versus the yuan at 675.50. Uh, uh, let's quickly have a look at the the dollar versus the ruble. Uh, dollars down 2% versus the ruble at 55.20. To the other currencies now, quickly through uh, the other currencies. Aussie dollar is up uh, 0 0.2 at 69.08. The uh, dollar is unchanged versus the Canadian dollar, 128.70. And uh, the Kiwi dollar is up uh, a third of a percent, 62.45. To the general commodities, uh, we've got uh, WTI crude down almost 2% at 98.70. We got Brent crude down 1.6% at 102.37. High grade copper is up uh, just over 1% at 333. And US snack gas is down 1% at 7.11. To finish off, we're going to look at the uh, the bond market. First, I want to look at the the 10-year gilt yield, which is uh, the gilt market is the UK government bond market, which is a, a joke, really. It's uh, totally manipulated. So we've got the prices rising at almost 10% <laughs> and the 10-year uh, and the government is being uh, charged 2.15% to borrow for 10 years. I mean, you'd have to be crazy to lend uh, money, your money to the government at that rate. <laughs> it's basically taking 8% of your capital uh, right now. So, and how do they succeed doing that? Well, it's the Bank of England. They create those reserves out of thin air and they buy these gilts. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and they give all the wrong signals. Uh, and they, they want people to believe that the Bank of England has uh, inflation under control and it's just a joke and the other thing as well regulatory wise they force pension funds and others to invest in the in these uh rubbish <laughs> uh investments the, these ponzi scheme investments and that's what government bonds are a, a, a big ponzi and i used to trade them back in the 90s and up until 2012 so i know that what i'm talking about so to the treasury uh, market, which is the U.S. government bond market, the 10-year yield is uh, unchanged. It's just above 3% at 3.01. The two years at 321. So the curve is uh, inverted a, a little bit compared to yesterday. We're now at 20 basis points. Again, that's telling us the economy is slowing down. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And uh, with that, I wish you all a, a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.